Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was his idea, don't blame me. Have a fireside chat. Why not? Why There's not? Lots, lots to talk about in this game. Well, we're starting off the new year. The new year isn't here yet. It's close, close enough. It's what, December who, 12th? Somewhere around there. Something like that. But we promise you, this next year we're going to really improve. We're stepping it up. Yeah, big we're going to step it up big time. But look what's going on tonight. We're going to have Darren doing some shots with the track man. You're going to see the real numbers right on the screen instead of the fire. And we need you to participate. You know, the integrity of our, our webinars uh, depend on you. So we need you to participate, ask some questions, and tune in. Whatever it is that you do, contribute. It could be a hell of a lot more than we are going to do. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, don't forget, any of you that are in Myrtle Beach, Darren, tell them all about the Jack Nicholas program. That's yeah, we've got um, Jack, Jack Nicholas Rebuild is what we call it. Yep. And um, at the beginning of every year, Jack would start as if he'd never played the game before. So we started, uh, we're doing some research tonight on grip and aim and all those different fundamentals that sometimes during the course of the year start to go sideways because you can't see what you're doing, right? right. Exactly. And um, I would want to see what I'm doing. <laughs> Anyway, it's only one seventy nine for the ninety day program. You can't beat that. And what is this? Three forty nine for the one hundred eighty day program. You just can't. And you get two private so, lessons and one of our uh, our new our new workshops. Um, enhanced skill development. Yes. What a hell of a name that is. Yep. Advanced skill development. You got to have one of those. <laughs> if you haven't got one of those in your bag, I mean, I mean really, I mean. Well, you didn't go to college, so. Uh, I didn't go to college. I didn't sure finish out of high school. <laughs> <laughs> I made paper airplanes. They thought I was going to be an engineer, but but no no. They really what you do is to drill down to the real nitty gritty of a given topic, whether it be chipping, putting. And it's intense. It's, it's a two hour session, um, and uh, you get down to the nitty gritty. You do. Then where in a lot of places you you go to a clinic kind of thing like that, they did need to touch on the subject. Yep. Here we're going right down there. So anyway, let's get started. All right, so right. Good. We're gonna put some stuff with the track. We turn the track man on. And get rid of our track man on. our beautiful log uh, fire. Do this. Oh, we forgot to move the chair. And there's stop dead in our track. And then we're gonna have Darren start to get some shots in a second. <laughs> and and you're gonna see. Here's what's really gonna be sent. The message gonna send home today. It's not so much club head speed. It's the angle of the golf club face at the moment of impact. Plus the club head speed. So you can swing at 90 miles an hour and hit the ball 60 yards. You can swing at 90 miles an hour and hit it at 30 yards. All right, so we've, we've, got, we've got our different um, measurements up here. It's how far the ball's going, how fast the club is moving, the angle of the club face, the relationship between the club face and the path, which we'll explain. We've got our club face, and then we've also got our dynamic loft. And what dynamic loft is, is dynamic loft is the loft at the hit, right? So it's a combination of what you're starting with and then how you're delivering it. Well, one other thing we forgot to tell them. Any of you haven't seen our Patrick Reed video, please go to YouTube, put in Patrick Reed, and you'll find it for like number four down the it's, list uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hit. You'll, you'll enjoy it. You'll get a good laugh on it. <laughs> All right, so what are you going to do? Hit us a shot first or what? Yeah, so, you know, one of the biggest... Um, Complaints that people have when they come up for a golf lesson is they slice. They don't hit it far enough. They're not consistent. So what we're going to talk about tonight is going to help you with that consistency and the distance and your slice for sure. All right, so I'm going to hit a shot here at about 60 miles an hour. And uh, it's probably going to go about 60 yards if I can pull it off. I got the 60. It went 92 yards. Went a little too far. That's, <laughs> like, that's like the old ghost t shirt. Let's try that one. We're getting, we're getting closer. Hour. We're getting closer there. So we got about 55 miles an hour, and we got a result of 67 yards total. And I'm going to try and do that same. Exact swing of 55. No, you're deliberately holding back on purpose. Remember, you're deliberately holding back, yes. Yeah, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to think that you know that you, you lost it totally. All right, so 
roughly 60 yards, somewhere in that area, and you can see how much farther I hit it. I got it up to 130 yards. That's a big difference from 60 some odd yards to 130. And the big difference in there was the face to path relationship that I created. That club face was coming in a lot more closed than it was open on the first one. And that's a, that's a key to, um, to distance there. You want to have some management of the club face, having that club face come in more in the closed position. And uh, if you've ever taken a lesson from me, you'll know I'm always animate about hitting the draw, hitting the ball to the left for us right-handers. So um, that's the reason why. You're going to get much more distance. You're going to get more power out of it. And, um, and who doesn't want that? I haven't had one person that has ever come for a lesson that wanted to hit it shorter. So um, that's one of the key components to getting that ball to go a little bit farther getting the club face to come in more close. So how do we do that? Well, it's a couple different ways. And these two swings that I made there, I felt it was more of how I released the golf club. That 60 yard shot, I made sure that the face didn't release. I made sure that the heel led. And then that 130 yard shot, I made sure that the toe passed the heel. So that's club face manage, management right in there, holding the face and then letting the club face release. And most people get in there and they're so tense, they don't let that club, club face release by. They just hold on for dear life and they lead with the heel. So um, that's one of the ways you can get that club face in there close. Does the release in and of itself create more speed? When you're talking Not about it does. It does a little bit. So here's, if we look at the release, can you see there on the camera pretty good? Yep. Okay. So you're not going to get a ton of club head speed doing this. All right, so that would be the release. So yeah, yeah but maybe, I'm talking about the hand, taking the angle and releasing the angle, not so much the club head. You will, you will, yes, exactly. If you're holding on for dear life, and, and that that word lag, I, I had a couple of students this week, beginners uh, or newer students, that were just holding on on purpose. And what I mean by holding on is they were doing this till the last second. And that's always going to lead to the heel ahead of the toe, as opposed to the toe passing the heel. But the whole idea of the toe passing the heel isn't going to create that much more speed for you. It's the direction on where that face is pointing, whether it's pointing here, here, or here. You don't want to lead with the heel ever. Most of us don't have that luxury of, that, of the club head speed of a Dustin Johnson or a Jack Nicklaus to lead with the heel. We have any questions so far? I'm looking for some of the chat. Any, anyone there? They're here. Come on. So let's talk. Uh, uh, Hold on, let me get there. Oh, here, here's Mike. How did Darren manipulate the club face close? Is it, uh, yeah, 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 let me get there on the chat box here. How did he, isn't it hard to time, to time it out? It is time, it is hard to time it out. And, um, one of the things that you can do that's real simple before the club even starts to move is just take that club face and close it a couple degrees and then take your grip, right? This is the way Nicholas played. Nicholas played with the club face open, but you can do the opposite there and you can close that club face. So if I just got that club face closed to start and I just put my normal grip on there and I just made kind of a normal, a normal swing, you'll see how that ball goes left. It goes hard left, right? Got 140 yards out of 66 miles an hour. That's not too bad. Not too bad there. But that's one of the places you can manipulate the club face is here at address and just closing it. And most people think that that's kind of a, 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 a cheater's way to do it. Well, I don't, I don't think as much because I've seen Nicholas do it this way too, too, uh, too many times. Frank, can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Okay, good, good. We were worried about that. You got any questions? I'm going to open up all the mics right now so somebody can ask a question. I'm trying to open them all up. There's some folks that don't have one. What are you doing here? I, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, get, well, when you're trying to figure that out, I'll give you a question. Go ahead. Um, Last week I was talking about how I get up, I have this bad habit of getting up on my toes and 
you told me to go get a noodle and stand on a noodle. Um, um, uh, <laughs> oh, damn it. I knew you were going to do something with that. Man. <laughs> you talk about a straight man for Bobby Lopez, I swear. <laughs> um, anyway, um, there's a, a golf magazine came out and had two articles. And one, both of the articles were saying about uh, staying on, uh, on impact, uh, the, it's a feeling that your, your left heel is going into the ground. Is that, is that a valid okay. thing? So when it comes to kind of the, the ground forces and the pressure in your feet, to me, it's all a reaction to where the golf club is moving. And if you ask Nicholas, he'd say the same thing there. So when you get out on your toes, the toes are because the club's moving out and the club face is open. So if you try to get into the left heel and the club face is moving out and the club is moving, uh, I'm sorry, the club face is open and the club is moving out, you have no chance. You know, it's, it's cause and effect in a golf swing. And so many times people are trying to do a, um, a work on an effect as opposed to the cause, right? So if you fix the club moving out and the club open, you're going to fix where the pressure is on your feet. So you can't really think that way. Does that make sense? My father-in-law had the same problem. <laughs> he said he had to find the cause. He found out what it was. He almost shot me. Which, which father-in-law was this? <laughs> number one. <laughs> number one. <laughs> He's dead now. It's all right. All right. Any, any, anybody else got a question? I've got a little golf story if you want to hear it. Oh, no. No, mute, mute the mic. Is it short? <laughs> you said long. Yeah, real short. Like you know, I went golfing with two. Go I went golfing with two other guys, and the one guy, he said, uh, "Boy, he said I had to pay pay a lot a price for this." He said, "I had to agree to do the dishes for a week." The other guy says, "Oh man, you got off easy. I had to agree to do the dishes for a month." And they looked at me and they said, "How about you?" And I said, oh, "I just slap her on the ass and said golf for sex," and she said, "Dress warmly." <laughs> He's breaking up a little bit there. Yeah. Before I get that one. <laughs> we got lucky. <laughs> Anybody else got a question? Uh, some of you don't have microphones. What about Mike? Mike has a microphone. He did have a microphone. I just turned it off. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Paul. Paul might have a dog. Hey, hey, uh, hey, Bobby, can you hear me? I'm on the phone. Yeah, hey, right. I, I'll, I'll ask a quick question to Darren. When you're releasing the club, Darren, um, how do you keep the forward shaft lean as you're releasing that through? It looked to me like, you know, you, there might have been a little flip there or something. Yeah, so that's, that's a really good point. Um, and, and there's some give and take there. I was just looking at some old Nicholas uh, footage earlier today, and he talked about how when the club face gets closed, you're going to have a lot more lean with the hands. And then when you early release, the hands are back. So I think there's a little bit of compromise there, but when we're looking at um, measurements that a track man will give, right? So if we take a look at what's called the dynamic loft here on the end, that's 16 degrees. Well, I'm hitting a seven iron here that the uh, the nice people at Callaway have sent us. They're very nice and very good to us. Yes. Um, very good to us. Um, the seven iron is roughly around 30 degrees, somewhere in that area. So good players are going to cut that in half, right? So when your hands are too far ahead, and I'll, let me try and hit one here. I'll try to get one to maybe 10 degrees of dynamic loft. Well, I'm going to try hard enough. Well, even 18 degrees of loft is a lot on a seven iron. That thing's probably 32 degrees. No, I can't even get it down that far. But, um, and that's all me trying to lead and lag the golf club. So it, 16 degrees, 18 degrees is the perfect amount, really. You're just cutting it in half. Any more than that, and your ball flight's going to come out too low, and the difference between where it lands and where it ends up is going to be too big. But you don't want to have a dynamic loft of, like, 30. All right, there's 31. That's no good because you're not taking any loft off there. That's me early releasing, right, and my hands, actually the hands would be even at that point. They're, they're not quite back. I tried to get them back, but 
didn't quite get there. Um, David, that, that club in and of itself is probably around 32 to 30. Yeah, exactly. Yep. But the clubs today are strong. That's not what the 30, that, that's not what it was when I was kid growing up. No, but you know, there's, was... there's a range of what's acceptable. And, you know, like I said, about half the amount of loft and impact is what an elite player will do. The average player is actually going to add some loft there. So the hands are just going to be slightly ahead as the club face is rotating closed. Jay Ingram has asked that you turn the toe over with the driver, too. I say even more so. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The further the club's away and the less of the loft, the quicker you've got to be in the release. Yep. There's no, it, it's the, and as Nicholas would say, it's the same swing, whether it's an iron or a driver. Although we meet it at different points in the swing, you're still going to have the club face closing. Right? And as the club gets longer, you probably uh, are losing a little bit of uh, feel of where that, that toe is in relationship to the heel. So you want to probably even do it sooner than you think. Right. If you're not sure, for those of you that are listening tonight and watching that are not members, get out your cell phone and video your swing and send it to us. Send it to us. We'll no penny out of your pocket. We'll do it for free. And then there's many that are listening in tonight or watching that also... Uh, are already members, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts because we don't want to have to get a real job. <laughs> <laughs> this work? It's like MTV, right? It's like MTV for golf. Anybody else got a question? Let me look in that little chat box here and see. The fire's still crackling. I can hear oh, yeah, it. Yeah, you got that right. Jerry Dore, do you have a microphone? I don't know if Jerry's. Jerry was here earlier. Just got new grips on the He's got new grips for Jerry. He's doing really good. That's going to help. We can talk a little bit about one of the things that Jerry needs to work on. And in order to get the club path swinging from the inside, so on that last swing there, I had a, a club path swinging from the inside about four degrees. What does four degrees mean? Who cares? It doesn't matter. But the club was swinging from the inside. You've got to make a turn in the back swing. Right, because the, the the golf club in your arms will follow your shoulders. So if you're not making a turn and you're just picking your arms and hands up, it's impossible for you to get the club and swing it from the inside. And that's one of the things we've been working with Jerry, and I know you worked with him a little bit on that today. I'm just kind of making sure we turn, so now I can swing the club more towards that second baseman, so to say, or two o'clock, whatever you want to say. But that club needs to swing from the inside, and in order to do so, you have to have some turn with your body. You just hit on something. I just saw it. What people do to confuse themselves, when they feel, they see that turn, they want to take the arms with the turn and get some low and underneath the plane. You can lift in the arms, but you can still turn in the chest. So there's two things that have to go on there. Yes, the body's turning. But you have to understand that the arms are also lifting. So the, the hands start at about belt height, and in the backswing they get about to shoulder height. So the arms are lifting to some degree in coordination with the turn. But I see a lot of people that all they do is just turn, and they're, they're in trouble. You're turning into trouble there. And like Jer, like Jerry we're talking about, he's just lift. So you have to have both in there. There's a combination of turn and lift. Any other questions? Alex, when rehearsing club release, when do you turn the hands over completely? Was it, it went away. Wait, hold on, let me get it. When do you turn the hands? I'm getting all kinds of. When you turn the hands over completely, right as the club reaches the left left foot, give or take? No. No, I, I think for most people. Not nine out of ten, they've got to feel that it happens here. That's where they have to feel it happens because they're always late. Most people are always late. That's a drill a lot of guys do on tour, right? So now. that's where you have to feel. Yep, it's here as opposed to holding on and then letting it happen somewhere down here. You've got to feel, and that's the thing about this game: what you feel and what's real never happen. So if I feel this as the average golfer most likely the face is going to hopefully come in closed. But it's not going to be to the point where you hit yourself in the, in the foot. But that's where you have to feel it there. 
That's that point. Now, Mike asks, when you play the ball back to hit low, what is your, now, why is it going lower? If you're putting the ball back in the staff, you're shafting in the golf club force, so you're de-lofting the golf club. Yeah, but it's it's not necessarily where you position the golf ball. It's more about where you position the ball. Though he's talking about a knockdown. Yeah, you shot. can do that, but you know I could put the ball back in my stance, and then at the hit go this way with my body, Definitely. which is no good. So you want to really feel like if you're trying to hit a low shot that your body's way in front of the golf ball. Okay, it might give you some issues directional wise depending on where you're coming from, but you want to feel like the body's out in front and the hands are leaving. So if I'm trying to hit a low shot, I'm really getting trying to get the center of my body or my zipper here on this side of the golf ball or my nose. So it's a relationship between where the ball is and where your body's at. Not necessarily always your feet. Now, I use a different strategy with that. I used to do that, and then I've learned if it's a nine iron, instead of putting it back in my stance and knocking it down and trying to hit it under the wind, I just take a seven iron and swim real easy. And that's that's the way Nicholas would describe it. In, in any of the uh, clinics that I've watched him give, it was just take a little a uh, little more golf club and swing easier. Yeah, you put less spin on the ball and push yep. it up in the air as much. Yep. And I uh, sort of learned that the hard way. Hey, Darren. Please, though, All right, go ahead. Who had a question here? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Um, when when I do that, when I try and hit the ball low, Darren, like like you said, suggested, like get a little bit ahead of it, I tend to push the ball to the right. Exactly. That's why I don't do that. You have yeah. to trap it. You got to you got to trap it and shut it and cover it if you're gonna. So and then, well, like I said, I yeah. said in there, you know, directional wise, you might have some issues in there. So you got to be pretty good with your hands in order to do that. But what's happening okay. is when you move forward. You're catching the ball sooner in the arc. So if you catch it sooner in the arc, the club face hasn't had a chance really to close. So that's why you'll hit that kind of block shot because it's so soon in the arc, the club face hasn't had a chance to close. So it's definitely one way you can do it. And then, you know, if you want to cheat a little bit, just close the club face at address because your tendency is to kind of block it out to the right when you get ahead of it. So there's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with that either. Whatever works. Everybody's swing is different. Whatever works. Is that a Patrick mm -hmm. Reed method you said? No, this is the, the Patrick Reed method. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you say you had to feel a little bit like that. Based on one of my rules. All right, who's got a question? Anybody else? Is everybody is it everybody happy with this format? You know, any, any comments? You like this a lot better? Yes, this is good. Yes. Very good. A lot better, huh? Look at that. See that? Pretty soon I've got a show come bring selling bananas or something, too. <laughs> oh, the pizza's here. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Pepperoni coming out. All right, just, just for your information, it's coming across as being very jerky. And also, there is a, a lag time uh, between the action and the uh, audio. So, so the bandwidth is not enough is what we're talking about. Probably, yeah. We need more bandwidth. It's working fine for me. Okay, there you go. So your, your computer needs more bandwidth. <laughs> <laughs> bandwidth. <laughs> Any other questions? Throw one at us. Go ahead. We can take it. Go on once. Bobby, I'll ask a quick one, and uh, just to get you, you and Darren talking. How does Darren talking about moving ahead of the ball uh, coincide with you saying not to go off sides? Exactly. That's why I don't do that. Yep. No, it's it's completely off sides. You're absolutely right. Right. And you get in front of it, you're going to have to trap it. You've got to shut the face. And and that was, in the old days, that's what we did. We'd take the club, put the ball back in your stance, hit like you call a punch shot, knockdown punch. And you, and you took a nine iron, you turned it into a seven iron, and finally dropped it. When I got to Europe and was playing on the European tour and I got around the other guys and they said, what the hell are you doing that for anymore? He said, we don't do that anymore. So you take two clubs more and you swing real easy. It doesn't put any spin on the ball. And it took me a while mm -hmm. to learn how to do it because you, you, at first you have a little trouble with getting the distance. Because I sort of knew what my nine punch shot would do because I does it as you know, a kid. So it took me a while to do the transition. So I don't think it just, it just happens. 
But for me, it's, it's usually two clubs, and especially into the wind. I found out that I was much better off just swinging easy into the wind with more club than trying to take less club and trap it and knock it down to fight it into the wind. Because, I'm, because when you trap it and you punch it, you're putting more spin on the ball. Of course, today it might not be as big an issue because these balls don't spin as much. Back in the old days when I was playing, sure. I mean, yeah, I had to put all the feathers oh, in yeah. person and sew it up. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that is definitely, it would be an offside move. Yeah. For sure. But once again, the club base has to match up with that. And there there are some really good players, like Burks Kept is a great example who he plays an offside game. It's, it's just the way he plays it. Billy Casper. That's what guys that are shut will slide. Yep. Guys that are open spin. Yep. See, so if you're if you're shut, you slide to, to protect that shut face you're trying to keep from hitting it left. Tom Lehman, he slides. Yep. He's got to slide, he's shut. Yep. Billy Casper, I mean, holy cow, nobody has slid more than he did. He would he would drag his right foot when he hit a shot. We could dig it up and take too long. Any other questions? Good question though, Paul. Really good. And how was, and you said your video's okay, right? Yep, I'm I'm getting you okay. Yeah, I, I, I've been hearing lately that most anybody from Boston has got good video. <laughs> 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 uh, video defenses, offenses. Yeah. <laughs> Those poor Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be fine. <laughs> well, you can laugh at us because I'm Miami and Darren's Jets. That's the right. Jets yeah, stink we're... and the Dolphins stink. They both At least we don't cheat, okay? Yeah. We don't cheat. <laughs> Baloney, we all cheat. <laughs> now, what, now what, how many of you guys think that Patrick Reed was cheating? I think he knew what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Exactly. He knew exactly what he was doing. And, and, and Paul, you just put it perfectly. That's exactly the way to say it. He knew what he was doing. Yep. Here's another guy. Yes, he was. Yep. And you know what? Is that really worth it to save a stroke? Well, the thing that entered his mind. He's just, there's a reason why he's table for one. There's a reason why he's table for one. Well, tell him why they call him table for one. <laughs> well, you, you would know. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's the nickname that he's called on tour, table oh, yeah. for one. He goes to a restaurant, nobody wants to sit with him. <laughs> but there's a reason, like, nobody likes him. We need a real audience that laughs. I mean, come on, what's going on here? And turn their mics on. His attitude makes me think he was intentional. Very good. That's good. There's a lot of guys that don't have microphones on, period. How about Mike? You got a microphone. Whoever Mike is. He keeled over and dropped dead on us. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. All right, Danny, did you have fun tonight? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, good good session. Yeah, we're all working on it and trying to bring you the best uh, the best that we can. We're getting there. Yeah, gonna... next Wednesday we're going to have some dancing girls and everything. So we'll <laughs> make it a lot more entertaining. Bobby, are you down in Myrtle Beach now? What's... Of course, yeah. I'm in Myrtle, we're in Myrtle Beach. We have right here in Myrtle Beach, I'm located, we have this indoor center that you see here. We have covered bays on the driving range. We've got uh, putting green. Lights. We've got 18 holes of golf. We've got we lights. We've got lights. Yep. So you don't have much of an excuse. So uh, it's a real nice facility down here. Now, I mean, the golf course is an executive course, which is good for what we do because we like to accent on short game and stuff. But I mean, there's so many golf courses here. It's like 100 golf courses. It's everything you need down here. It's everything we need to work on. We've got a good, big, gigantic grass tee on the, on the driving range as well. And uh, practice bunker. I mean, what I've been naming an executive golf course is because most executives are old and fat and they need to have a short course. Just like you. <laughs> That's right. I was why I was asking. <laughs> Somebody just left. You see, you see what you did? <laughs> you scared them away. All right, gang. Well, email us with any topics that you have. And please tell your friends about it and, and you know, start bringing friends and we'll go so we can grow this thing a little bit. You know, just tell your friends to come out and then somebody new, tell them send in a video of your swing and you'll see these guys will figure out what it is. I'd like you to do an expose sometime on, uh, on, on chipping 
uh, the multi club versus the single swing. Multi swing versus single swing. What are you talking about? He's like, mm-hmm. one club versus, you know, varying the different clubs. You got to yeah. vary different clubs when you're chipping. You can't chip with the same club. Uh, well, yeah, well, yes, I agree with you, but not everybody does it that way. And we can definitely discuss how you would be successful with just one club versus, you know, four or five different options, different tools. But does it, doesn't Phil use his 60 degree only? No, he doesn't use a 60 degree only. Was he, he was you say that is Phil Mickelson uses a 60 degree only. I said no. No, he uses a 64 once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, if he has a chip shot that requires an you know, One of the things Phil iron. does is he plays the ball so far back that when he has his hands forward, the 64 degree turns into 50 degrees. So he plays it so far back, that's why he needs all that extra loft. That's one of the things he does. But we can talk about that next week or whatever. Yeah, send us in any uh, this email. It's a quick service at quickfixcoff.com and say, hey, would you guys cover this or cover that? We'll add it into the repertoire. <laughs> I didn't know you could speak French. <laughs> <laughs> but only the good half. <laughs> uh, roll of elbows. I didn't know that Sarah even had elbows left. <laughs> <laughs> then he wore him out as a teenager. <laughs> All right, gang. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, we're quick. We did. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. You got it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I enjoyed that. Thank you.